I've already introduced you to two different data types. That is a string and an integer. So we used a string when we wanted to store some kind of text, and we used that integer in the last part when we looked at that days of the week example or days in a week. Now what we're gonna do is talk about all of the different data types. And then for the more complex data types, we're gonna drill down into different parts because some of them require a little bit more explaining. So let's take a look at the list of different data types that you will find in PHP. Now what I'm doing here, by the way, is creating a comment. We are also gonna be going into them as well. So just ignore this for now. Okay, so the first one then is a Boolean. This is something we haven't looked at, but essentially all this is is a true or a false value. So something can be true and something can be false, on or off, yes or no. It's pretty much the same thing. So that is a Boolean. So whenever you hear the word Boolean or see the word bool, it basically just means a true or a false value. There are some complexities around this. For example, one is true in PHP and zero is false, but we will dive into that later. So the next one is very simple. It's a string. We've already seen these. It just looks something like that. And we've also taken a look at an integer, which is a number, a whole number. So one up to one million, whatever. Okay, so the next one then is a floating point number. So floating point number. And you'll often see this referred to as a float. More than likely, we'll call it a float. And this is essentially just a number or that's something that's not a whole number. So 1.5, 50.25, uh, 50.2525, whatever. It's a floating point number with a decimal point. So the next one then is an array. Now this is slightly more complicated and we're gonna be going into arrays later on, uh, but essentially this is just kind of a collection of different variables. So we'll place items within square brackets and we'll have multiple values like this, but we're gonna be diving into that at the end of this part and we're gonna go into more detail a little bit later on. So the next one then is an object, which is what you'll find when you start to get into more object-oriented programming. We're not gonna be covering this because it's a little bit more complicated, uh, but uh, that's something that you kind of should go into after this series. The next one then is a resource, which is basically something that's returned when you, for example, uh, open up a file with PHP. And we are gonna be looking at this in the practical part of this series. The next one that we definitely are gonna be covering because there's a lot of mystery surrounding this is a null value. So this is a bit of an odd one. What is null? What does it mean? It's not zero, it's null, uh, but we will be talking about that later. And the last one is a callback or a callable, so callback or callable. So you'll often hear something called a callback function, uh, but again, that's a little bit more complicated, so let's leave this one for now. Okay, so now that we've gone over the kind of main data types that we can work with, let's start with strings, because there's a couple of more things that I want to talk about here. Now, up until now, I've kind of been referring to this as text, but the correct term obviously is string, so we will be using that from now on. So string is text. So as we know, a string is defined by putting text inside of single quotes. But what we also haven't looked at is the fact that we can also put this into double quotes. Now it will work in exactly the same way, but there are some slight differences in when you might want to use single quotes and when you might want to use double quotes. Now, once again, a really important note is that if you are using single quotes for just variables like this that you're not concatenating or doing anything special with, try and stick to a standard. Much like when we spoke about the naming convention of a variable name, make sure you either stick with single quotes or you either stick with double quotes. There isn't much difference at all. There's not really much speed difference unless you want to micro optimize, which is never a good idea. Either way, the key thing to note is pick what you want and go ahead and use that consistently. Okay, so we know that we can store a string value like text, so you could write hello inside of a string. But what you can also do is store numbers, so you could store an integer, you could store a float inside of a string. Now, this isn't necessarily bad, as we've already seen, but it makes it trickier to perform arithmetic, so we couldn't very easily add this up and it just really doesn't make sense. So if you are defining them out, always do them without single quotes. 
Okay, so let's take a look at some of the problems that we'll find when we work with strings and then we'll go on to the rest. So if you use single quotes within a string, so for example, let's create a message just here, then you'll find a problem when you want to use single quotes within that string. Now, when would you use single quotes? Well, when you have uh, abbreviations. So for example, it's, so we have now a single quote within here, a lovely day today. So you'll notice that my text editor is showing this as green. That essentially means something's gone wrong somewhere and this is probably not going to work. So let's go and echo out message and we'll have a look at the error that we get. So if we go ahead and refresh. You can see here we get a syntax error, unexpected S, which is a string on line three. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. On line three, we have an unexpected S just here. Now, the reason for this is that PHP is saying, well, you've started a string here with a single quote and you've ended a string here with a single quote. What I expect to see is a semicolon. Now, of course, what's happening is this isn't an end of a string. It's a string within a string. It's an apostrophe that we use for an abbreviated word. So how we get away with this, if you're using single quotes, is we escape it using a backslash. Basically, all this means is that when PHP interprets this string, it will say, oh, I found a backslash. That means that the next string shouldn't be taken as a literal uh, string that we're using or literal character that we're using as part of PHP. So now that I've done that, notice that it works. So if you are using single quotes, then of course, uh, go ahead and escape any single quotes within that. Now, if we were to switch this over to double quotes, we don't actually need the escape character. If I go ahead and refresh that now, you can see here that we actually see the escape character because it's not required. So uh, PHP has just left it in there for us. So if I get rid of this, go ahead and refresh, notice that it works and we now have the result that we were after. Now you might be thinking, well, why don't you just always use double quotes? Surely then there's never gonna be a problem. Well, of course, sometimes you may wish to use double quotes within a string. So again, you've arrived at the same problem. So for example, if I were to get rid of this and say, she said learning PHP is fun, then what we've actually done is created two double quotes here within double quotes. So again, we're gonna see a similar error. So unexpected learning because this to PHP seems like it would be the end of the string. So again, we just go ahead and we escape each of them. We need to escape the last one because uh, it's kind of, it kind of looks weird, but it's the uh, end of a sentence here and uh, we may have something like a dot. If we refresh now, you see we get the result that we need. Now, again, if we were to use single quotes, we know that we don't need to escape this because we're placing double quotes within single quotes and we get the correct result. Now, I said earlier that you should keep consistency when you're working with strings. So you should maybe always use single quotes or always use double quotes. But let's say, for example, at some point in our code, we were uh, creating a name. So let's say Sally here. And we wanted to build up a message to say, Sally said learning PHP is fun. Well, in this case, it's perfectly acceptable if we were, say, using double quotes elsewhere to then go ahead and use single quotes if it makes life easier. There's nothing necessarily wrong with doing that. So in this case, we know about concatenation. So we can say name, we can concatenate on, get rid of that X because we don't need that. Sally said learning PHP is fun. We've used single quotes here because it's easier to use these double quotes inside, but we've used double quotes here. So say we were always using double quotes, then we would use single quotes just for this particular case because it's easier. And there we go, we see uh, that result just there. Brilliant. Now, the way that this is sometimes useful is if you're working with outputting or using HTML within variables. Now, if you're not too sure about HTML, that's absolutely fine. But in HTML, we define out a link that we can click using an A tag or an anchor tag. So for example, if I were to go ahead and echo out in double quotes, a href equals and then two double quotes and then end that tag there. This is the link that we click and then the href here is where we go to. So we don't have to put anything in there. Now what's happened here is because we're using two double quotes inside of here, it kind of gets a little bit messy to go and escape things. See how that's not as readable now. And of course in here would be a link to say, uh, 
google.com or something like that. So again, it just looks a little bit messy. It works now. We can go ahead and click on this and go through to Google. However, it's probably a good idea when we're working with the HTML and we have a lot of double quotes, we just use single quotes to output this and it's a lot more readable like this. Okay, so that just about wraps up strings. We'll come across some other things that we can do with strings a little bit later on. But for now, you should be comfortable with working with strings. And like I said, go ahead and pick either single or double quotes, use them consistently, unless it makes sense to switch them out. Okay, so let's jump on to the next video where we're going to look at integers, and then we're going to look at floats.